Back here on Extra Rounds from UFC Fight Pass, I'm TJ DeSantis along with Alex Perez. Alex, I hate starting these things out uh, by making it out about myself, but you occupy a very uh, significant part in my personal journey in mixed martial arts. Uh, of your 21 fights prior to the UFC, I called 13 of them. Uh, over the Tachi Palace, and uh, I've called a lot of fights, uh, but I've never called more fights from any one individual fighter than yourself, and I get the opportunity to do it again. It's not a fight, necessarily. It's a submission grappling match coming up here, part of the UFC Fight Pass Invitational, but uh, let me just say, I'm excited to work with you again. <laughs> I know, right? It's been it's been, it's been a while, but uh, I definitely enjoy like uh, having you commentate. I think you're one of the best guys out there to do it, you know, it's, I'll tell some of the guys at the UFC. I think you're up there with them, and it's, you're you know you know the sport re very well. So I, I like talking to you. I appreciate that. I mean, I'm I'm one of the few guys that saw yourself fight in the parking lot of the Tachi Palace, and I'm not talking about like a a street assault. I'm talking about your first pro fight in the uh, the parking lot out there in Lemoor. And man, it's been a a long journey from there until now, and uh, it's been a crazy couple of years for yourself. I was looking at your topology page, and uh, I had to write it down: nine bout cancellations or switch ups since 2021. Like. It has been a, a an interesting couple of years for yourself. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, some of that stuff was out of my control. Uh, you know, uh, I got hurt the first time. When, like in May, I got hurt. I, you know, what I mean, I got hurt. I pulled out. Then I was supposed to fight someone else. They got hurt. Then got no. You know, I just kept going off and on. Like, you know, sometimes it was my injury. Sometimes their injury. Sometimes it was just, you know, obviously that was during the COVID era. So right. COVID was going around as well. So, uh, you know, what I mean. Uh, you have to expect the unexpected, I, though. That's what I'm saying. Like, it, it just yeah, like, yeah, you know, for me, I like it's crazy because people say stuff, and I'm like, I just don't put my personal life out there. You know what I mean? Uh, a lot of people don't know that I, I had a stretch fracture in my back. A lot of people don't know I got orbital surgery. A lot of people don't know that I've been through that I've had COVID a few times. You know what I mean? It's just personal things that I keep to myself. So it's crazy when you hear people all oh, this, and I'm like, oh, I just kind of let it slide, but. Well, you, know you have to. Out of my control. Well, the reason I brought it up, though, is, is it wasn't necessarily your fault every single time. It was opponents. It was, you know, fights being rescheduled. You mentioned COVID. Like, no one can really manage that. And the reason I bring it up is because now you have a, a pretty high-profile grappling match with, uh, you know, two-time NCAA uh, Division One wrestling champion in Roman Bravo Young. While it's a high-profile submission grappling match, I still got to feel like it's, it's probably not as nerve-wracking as just getting ready ready for a fight and and ultimately maybe not having it uh you know come to fruition uh no nah, i mean i'm just i'm just enjoying the process you know what i mean uh obviously my last fight some stuff happened so I, I got i got i got cleared you know to start training uh probably like maybe like a week before that from the rby uh matchup you know and i was like yeah screw it why not you know what i mean i can't technically fight yet i got one more appointment coming up to, you know i get fully cleared but i got cleared to train and stuff so why not stay active around that time uh and uh, having a good match with RBY. Uh, I mean, he's one of the guys I look up to, you know, like I, I'm a big wrestling fan, you know, people from the more we've had great, some of the great uh, wrestlers come out of there, like Isaiah Martinez, Chris Pellington, Mark Anderson, you know, guys like that, that went on to division one to do great things. Um, so, you know, I know who RBY is. I've watched him wrestle. Um, I was rooting for him, you know, this year. He's, he's a good dude. I've talked to him here and there. Like we're not best friends or anything like that, but he's a good solid dude. I'm excited to compete against him. Obviously, you're a UFC veteran. You're a former title challenger. Like coming into the mixed martial arts world, like you're the veteran. But taking on a, a wrestler, you know, the likes of RBY, it, it's it's interesting because in MMA, there's sort of like that uh, gentleman's agreement in certain fights to like stand up and, and trade and see who's got the better uh, striking. You might, you know, have a interesting sort of uh, you know test of wits here in the wrestling department. You're, you know, a standout wrestler. Uh, yourself, maybe not at the the level of RBY and in D one, but I mean, are are you going to test your wrestling skills against this guy on the mat coming up here at the Fight Pass Invitational? Yeah, why not? I mean, obviously he has great accolades. Like, I mean, this guy's probably one of the top five in the in the world right now at his weight class, you know. And uh, why not? I mean, what's the worst case scenario that happens? I get taken down, or he takes he stuffs my shot. I mean, who cares? I mean, I'm just going in there having fun, uh, no pressure. Uh, go in there, have a good time, and test my skills. You know, I've been working for a long time. Like I'm treating this like a like a fight, basically. I mean, I'm still training my stand up stuff. I'm doing jujitsu. I'm doing wrestling. So I'm, nothing's really changed on that part. But so I'm I'm excited. I'm ready to have fun. Uh, 
have a good time and uh, enjoy myself. Like, I'm not probably one of the first times in a long time that I can say I'm just going out there. Like, the result is the result. You know what I mean? If he beats me, great. If he doesn't, great. You know, I'll beat him, great. He's, uh, like, I'm just I'm just excited to compete again. It's been a long time since I've obviously been years, two crazy years, two and a half years for me. So I'm just excited to get in there and compete again. Uh, I'm curious uh, if you feel the same way. Uh, we got we got a little bit of connection issue. We're trying to work through it here. Are you still yeah. with me? Yeah. All right. I, I'm curious if you think of it the way that I do because for me, Alex, I don't think you really have anything to lose here. If you you know did you know lose or draw or, or whatever, it's not going to say anything about your standing as a mixed martial artist. You're still one of the best flyweights in the world. Nothing's going to happen in this match to take that uh, away from you. So. Uh, I think that you can have that sort of laid back attitude. I, I do wonder, though, if you have a significant advantage in the idea that it is a submission grappling match. It's not a wrestling match. If he pins your shoulders to the floor, great. You know, we're going to see you work, you know, your, your your bottom game. Do you think that he is ready for, I mean, your ability to actually finish this fight and your submission skills? Yeah, I mean, I, he works out with good guys. I mean, I, you know, he's at... I know he trains with Dominic Cruz. Obviously, they they wrestle and grapple. Uh, I know he goes to. Uh, I know he's trained a couple of different gyms. I seen the, a picture of him with Aaron Pico. You know, they train out there. So obviously, he's putting in the work. Uh, I mean, I I'm pretty sure he's not a slouch. You know, what I mean, I'm pretty sure he's working. He might not have the most experience, in it, but also for a D1 athlete to transit, a D1 wrestler to transition over to, you know, grappling isn't the hardest part. You know, uh, there's a lot of similarities from wrestling to grappling. Um, so. I'm pretty sure he's been working, and like I said, I'm excited. Yeah, we saw uh, Bo Nickel make the the jaunt to the uh, UFC, and last year he also did the the Fight Pass Invitational, and it was amazing to see Bo actually go to his back a couple times in that tournament structure. I mean, I, I'm I'm guessing that RBY is not going to be a, as willing, which w should make it fun. I mean, this guy's like an acrobat. D do you expect a lot of scrambles in this match? Yeah, you know, just his style, like he scrambles and stuff like that. I mean. Um, I'm expecting a, like a crazy whirlwind, uh, like like a tornado basically coming in. You know, it's just gonna because the way he wrestles, he just moves so much, and he shoots from those. I mean, he creates beautiful angles. Like uh, I think Club Swanson said the best, he uh, makes beautiful chaos. You know, and that's what he does in wrestling matches. He's all over the place. You know, he has a Dominic Cruz footwork. Uh, you know, with his like, it should be fun. Yeah, I'm not as eloquent as Cub Swanson in my, uh, you know, words, even though I speak for a living. But uh, I do say that I, I like my my fights the same way I like uh, breakfast. I like scrambles. You know, the scrambles are always fun. They're always entertaining. And uh, we should be in store for uh, a pretty fun one coming up here uh, on June 29th. Alex, I appreciate your time. What's the, the rest of the year looking like? It sounds like you got one more appointment. But do, do you feel like you're going to be able to get back in the octagon, you know, one or, one or two times before this year's over? Uh, yeah, so like I said, I got one more appointment coming up. Uh, thank God everything's going well right now. You know, uh, all my appointments came up clean. Uh, I got one more coming up uh, in about a week or two, uh, probably after the Invitational, and then hopefully get cleared from there. And then from there, I'm hoping to step back in in September. Uh, you know, give me some time to actually, like, I mean, I've been training, you know what I mean? But I've also not rushed into, like, complete training just because I don't want to kill myself the first week. So just get back into lifting and stuff like that. Um uh, I've been doing a lot of drilling, sparring. Like, uh, we do a sparring days, a spar once a week. But a lot of drilling, a lot of wrestling, a lot of jujitsu, just kind of basic stuff. But once I get cleared, I, I can start wrapping it up uh, 100% going back to what I'm used to doing. So I'm hoping to get in September and hopefully at the end of the year, December, you know. My son's get it's Christmas time, so my son wants a good a good present this year. There you go. You got to get back to work to make sure you can uh, lock that up for him. I appreciate your time, Alex. Uh, best of luck, part of the uh, uh, with your involvement with the Fight Pass Invitational, and uh, hopefully we'll see you back in the octagon not too long after that. Sounds good, man. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.